Hi there. I've been um, sent a few requests with regard to shape files and how they're actually, uh, what they actually consist of, and uh, what you might uh, email to someone. What's the sort of minimum uh, components? Because obviously, um, as I'm sure you may be aware, a uh, shape file is actually more than one sort of file type. So I was just going to clarify what the what the file types are and what you know what they're for. Um, so you can see what's actually going on in the background. So here I'm. I'm actually in ArcGIS Pro. Um, this is t uh, 2.4, and um, uh, this is a blank template. So I'll just bring up a new map, and uh, uh, eventually we get there. Um, so let's get it to the UK somewhere. So what I'm going to do is sort of go from scratch here, so you can see all the different files being built up. So here's my um, folder where I'm going to put the uh, create the shape the shape file my example so you can see it's totally empty there's 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 uh, nothing um, in this folder so I'll bring up the I'll use a toolbox to create shape file and and do, do this work so in analysis I'll just I'll just click on tools and uh, bring up the toolbox so what I'm going to do is create a new um, shape file so I'll just uh, type shape file. So there's a little demonstration here as well about using the tools and finding the the um, toolbox, uh, etc. So as you can see, it's create feature class. That's actually what I want to want to do. It's uh, it's obviously a bit slower on these tools than the old Arc Map. Um, that's the way they've created them. But never mind. Uh, so I'm putting everything in there. I'll call it my new. Sh uh, I'll just call it new shape file uh, let's just make it to store points uh, there's other information here not too fast and um, I will set the coordinate system I think I've got some favorites here there we go British National Grid so it's got a coordinate system there and I press run so what happens here so this folder is now populated. It's actually populated with uh, uh, quite a few bits and pieces, as you can see. So I mean, so what, what's going on here? Well, shape files, anyway, as as you, uh, I'm sure you, you're aware, that they're, they're, they're a vector format. So I'm, as you saw, I'm pointing out that I'm storing points here um, in this shape file. So it, it, it's a vector format uh, as developed, uh, effectively regulated by Esri, and um, uh, lots of uh, other uh, GIS clients, uh, QGIS, open source, GeoServer, uh, MapServer, um, MapInfo will read a shapefile, and you can um, sort of cache the objects and stuff like that. So it's a it's a pretty uh, sort of open one. Lots of people, uh, lots of software use it. Uh, SHP there is your the sort of main file, shall we say? But you need more than that to 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 draw uh, to open. Um, not to be confused, there is an SHP extension, I think it's for AutoCAD, and it's to do with the font source, so um, not to be confused with that. So there is another .shp, is, is my point. So the, the actual main file that stores the feature geometry is in this .h .shp, and you can see it's just 1k, it's, there's nothing in there, it's empty, and, um, uh, and that's it. Um, now the SHX file... Now that's the, the sort of index of the feature geometry, so that's also required. So those two are definitely, they're so far, the ones required. So, so what else is going on? Well, the DBF. So the DBF, DBF there, so that's the database. Uh, literally, it's uh, sort of a, a database format. I think it's DBase4. Four, was it or, or something like that um, but anyway um, and, and so that's where the you know you have your attributes and the data uh, the attributes all, all those values are stored in the DBF so uh, again there's no data in there at the moment so I've just got it's just 1k um, and you can see the icon here it's a sort of almost spreadsheet, <laughs> sheet, sheet, uh, spreadsheet like uh, tabular um, it's a you know a, a database file. So what else is in there? Um, well, we have a PRJ, and we can have a quick look at that. Let's open that. 
with um, actually let's open just with notepad and you can see how the projection is defined so it's British National Grid that's the name of it in um, the uh, Arches Pro uh, well name of it generally and and all the um, various bits of information um, there's lots of uh, YouTube videos on projections, coordinate systems, transformations, all that sort of thing, central meridians, etc. Um, there's plenty of other videos on that, but you can see it stores it there uh, in the PRJ file. The the other file you can see at the top here is CPG. So, so that, that's um, that's a, an optional file, and um, and in, and indeed a PRJ you could create uh, yourself um, in the GIST client. So PRJ is not um, strictly necessary, but it's highly recommended you deliver a PRJ, a project a projection file with your data. Um, and uh, but but the CPG, so that's that's the optional um, file. It's all about the code page. So it identifies the character set. So UTF-8 in my case, you know the sort of main generic contains ASCII characters, all that sort of thing uh, for the internet. So so you'd you'd really have that for your DBF. You know how the characters are going to be drawn how do they appear so again if I just open up this um, let's do an open with a CPG um, I'll just do it. actually I've got notepad plus plus I should just use that really it doesn't matter so it just says UTF-8 so it's optional it'll just you know if you if you load it on your your computer without CPG it would just uh, use what your local um, character setters in Windows or, or what have you. Um, that's what the DBF will do. So a couple of other things going on. There's an XML with some additional information for ArcGIS. Definitely not necessary. And uh, it's just just for the Esri software. Um, and uh, there's a couple of lock files there. Um, I.e., I've got it open in my client software. So the lock files, yeah, that's all. That's all they are. They're just saying, look, I'm, I'm working on this. It is locked. And um, so no one else can uh, edit it. So again, not necessary. So what would you email to someone? As a minimum, I would email one, two, three, those four files. If I knew um, that I had some very particular character sets going on in the DBF, I might also send someone the CPG. So, and and also if, if it, again, as, as a sort of useful thing, this XML, let's have a look at it just so you um, you know, if you know they're going to a um, an Esri um, product, you can just pick up a bit of metadata there. You see, so it just tells you uh, the, the, the sort of process used when it's created, that sort of thing. Um, so it's it's op definitely optional. So you, you, you might send that, but like I said, the main things that you would send are those four. That's where you'd email. So. Just to continue with this, what, what happens when you do other bits of work, shall we say? Okay, so what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just alter um, what's going on in this folder by um, indexing some attributes. So I'll just show you what I what I mean. I'm going to create some other files in this folder as a sort of extension to the whole shapefile thing. So in here, let us... Um, Field. Add field. Drag it across. See, I can just drag from the um, contents over to the tool toolbox, uh, just in case you didn't know that. So, input new field. So, let's say it's a um, what are these? Are points? Maybe it's to map trees. You know, tree um, codes or something. And there's a text of ten. I don't know that we fill in. So, I'm adding a field tree codes to my new shape file. So let's run it. Happens very quickly, obviously. A little report there that pops up. If you look in here, uh, no no change really um, that you can see, obviously, apart from a timer, uh, time change. But let's just um, go to shape file. Open attribute table. And there's my column tree codes. Actually, what's that? Uh, name of that film. Okay, that's just in case I was to run it again. That's all. I just wondered what that warning was. Okay, so I just added a field. What about if I create an index? OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to add an attribute index on shapefile. What's going to happen in here in this list of files? Fills to index, tree codes. Run. Have a look and look what has happened here. We've got this ATX file. So the ATX files is the attribute index. So if I was to create another attribute, should be in history, uh, add field, input table, field name, um, new field, it's just a, let's make it a date, I don't know why I'm spending so long choosing, could be anything. So I'm going to add, add this, um, actually, might use that later on in another tutorial. Uh, new field is short, press run, okay, and then go back. And then add attribute index. It's the same thing. Actually, I'm I'm dragging it across, but I could actually select from the drop down there. I don't know why I'm I can easily do that. Uh, new field, index it. It's probably not a wise thing to index a shot, but there you go. And then if you look here, look what's happened. We've got another ATX. So you see how um, so you get an ATX per attribute index. That's fair enough. But what about a spatial index? Add spatial index. Select the layer, new shape file. Press run. Let's have a look. And there you go. We've got um, SBN and SBX. Those two, these two at the top here, SBN and SBX. So they they are your spatial indexes. So um, now those are two things. Um, it's, it's obviously binary data. Uh, it's really only used by Esri software, um, but it's 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 not strictly necessary because uh, if you you know you, you could create the index anyway later. For example, it, it gets it happens when you up, upload to um, Arches Online, or you can just create a spatial index anyway. But um, I mean, the SHP file anyway does does create create uh, an index for the geometry, and this is additional um, spatial indexing information. So you you don't you wouldn't have to like I said this is you know about emailing the data to someone. Um, you wouldn't uh, need these two, and um, uh, in order to open the shape file in, into ArcGIS, and you could uh, and they could create it anyway at will. So um, that's my that's the end. Hope, hope, hope that was useful to you. Uh, you can see um, these lock files there. Let's just exit. Not, not. Um, and now the lock files are gone because I've closed ArcGIS Pro. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Thank you.